Hey, what's going on YouTube? I'm Darkjack, and in this video, I go 59 and 1 in the map plaza, getting a nuclear medal using a variety of different guns. And in this video, what I want to talk about is how I decide what games to play, and what games am I playing, and what games am I planning on buying. And so I'm going to put a link to a Word document below that lists all my goals, all the games I own, and all the games I'm planning on buying. And you'll need to look at it in order to fully understand everything that I'm saying. And the document is color-coded, and so the games that I'm going to play on Xbox are in green, because green is the color of Master Chief's armor. Blue is for PlayStation, because that's the PlayStation symbol's color. Purple is PC, because purple is the color of royalty, and PC gamers believe that they are the master race. And red is for Nintendo, because Mario has a red cap. And so, when I play games, I am a goals-based gamer. I base my gaming goals around getting the highest possible gamer score, getting as many achievements as possible, and doing things that not very many people are able to do. So I'm a goals-based gamer, whereas some people just like to move from one game to the next. I like to stay with a game until I've accomplished all my goals with it, and then I move on to the other game, and then I'll go back and play that game later, if it's a good game. And so my goals for gaming are games that I've beaten, and I want to play again because they're such good games, or the games that I've not beaten yet, and I want to have a new gaming experience. And if a game is really good, it's worth beating multiple times. Just like if you've read a really good book, that book is worth reading multiple times, rather than just once. Because that way you'll get more out of it. Because if you read a book just once, you're not going to be able to catch everything. It's the same with a movie. It's also the, the same with a video game. And so when I played Final Fantasy XIII, which is one of my favorite games of all time, uh, after playing the game for the first time, I didn't quite understand the story fully, and the story was kind of confusing to me. But now that I've played it over three times, I actually understand the story a whole lot better, and I've also read through all the data logs in the game as well. So that allows me to have a much better grasp and appreciation for all the work that went into the game. And so at the very end of the game, uh, for example, Fang says, when prayers turn into promises, not even fate can stand in their way. That's actually an allusion to several different things throughout the pre previous course of the game. So when Vanille says that I'm going to save Cocoon, and that's not just a prayer, but it's a promise. So that's an allusion to that, for example, and you wouldn't catch that if you didn't pay careful attention to the dialogue. Then also earlier, uh, Lightning is referred to as Claire Fallon by Sarah through Galeth Disley as he's trying to imitate her. And so her true name, Claire, isn't revealed explicitly until Final Fantasy XIII 2. But if you paid careful attention to XIII, you would know what her name is before XIII 2 by paying attention to the dialogue. So the more times you play through a good game, the better appreciation you have for it. And so some games I've played through multiple times are Final Fantasy XIII 3 three times, Final Fantasy X at least two times, then all the other Final Fantasy games uh, 4, 5, and 6 at least once, uh, the Donkey Kong Trilogy, I've played through that at least five times. Crisis, at least three times. Uncharted 2 and 3, at least twice. The Witcher 2, three and a half times. Dark Souls, five times. Demon Souls, two times. Halo 3, at least five times. I lost track of all the times I've beaten Halo 2. Dead Space 2, at least four times. Dead Space 3, two times. And Red Dead Redemption, two times. Among many others. And so in gaming... What I'm looking for is essentially a sense of accomplishment by doing things that not very many other people are able to do. And so I'm ranked 16 in the world for Halo 3 Living Dead, so I would play that every weekend whenever Double XP would come out. And I have over a 47,000 gamer score, and I have at least a 3 KD in every Call of Duty game. And on, P on PS3 in, in Call of Duty, it's much higher. And when I play games, I'm looking for a challenge. And so I've beaten every Halo and Call of Duty game on the hardest difficulty, even Halo 2 and World at War, which were ridiculously hard because of Jackal snipers. And every, fa every place you went to in World at War was like a grenade factory. And so when I play Call of, du Call of Duty and Halo, I play through the game at least three, three times when I get it. I play through it once on normal, just to beat it. Then I play through it on the hardest difficulty, and then I play through it on the easiest difficulty to get all the achievements and find all the collectibles. I've gotten all the achievements in Dead Space 2, which includes Hardcore Mode, which means you have to beat Dead Space 2 with only three saves. I've gotten every achievement in Dark Souls, and I've beaten it multiple times. I've gotten every achievement in The Witcher 2, which is also a very challenging game. 
and I've eaten Bioshock Infinite in 1999 mode without buying any items from the stores, which is the scavenger hunt achievement. And I have all the achievements for Black Ops and all the Call of Duty games except for Black Ops 2 and Modern Warfare 2. And so when I'm playing again, I want a challenge. I want to do something that I can take pride in. But I want a fair challenge. I don't want a challenge that is so hard to d get that I have to use cheats to beat it. And so one gaming goal that I would consider to be completely unfair is beating the game Battletoads without using any cheats. And if you've played Battletoads for the NES, that's probably the most difficult game ever made. Because it's really, really unfair. It's extremely challenging and it's extremely cheap. It's much cheaper than anything in Dark Souls. And also when I'm playing games, I try not to play any genre of games back to back, which means if I play a first person shooter game after beating that, I don't want to play another first person shooter game. I want to play an RPG or an action game, or after playing a third person shooter, I don't want to just play another shooter. I want to go to a third person action game or something else. And so when looking at my gaming goals for right now, the gaming goal I'm working on right now is beating Nino Kuni, and that's a Japanese game. Nino Kuni means the, the other world in Japanese. And so that's a great game that I'm playing through now. I really enjoy it. And then after that, I'm going to do uh, Scene Mora, which is an arcade game for the Xbox. It's a, it's a shooter game. Uh, that's from like the perspective of a fighter jet from, the old, from an old-style video game. And I've beaten that before, but I want to do it again because I only have two achievements in that, in that game. Then I'm going to do The Simpsons Arcade. So I've only done that once, so I want to try it again. And then after that, I want to go back and try Halo 3 multiplayer one more time. I was never able to get my 50 in Halo 3. And I don't plan on doing it anytime soon. Because the multiplayer in that game is pretty much dead. And it takes forever for me to find a match because I, I have so much XP in that game. But I'm going to try it one more time just for old time's sake. And then I want to play through Black Ops 2 again on normal. Because I lost my, most of my single player progress for most of my games on the Xbox because my achievements glitched. And so I deleted my profile and re-downloaded it. And when I did that, I lost my single player progress for most of my games. But thankfully I did not lose it for Dark Souls. Otherwise I would have been really, really mad. And then I want to finish a new playthrough of Dark Souls. And then I want to go back to God of War Ascension. And finally beat that on normal. Because so I could never beat the game on normal because of the Trial of Archimedes. So I'm going to go back there and beat it on normal after be beating it on easy. Because it's going to be much easier now that they've patched it. And then I want to do a second playthrough of Mass Effect 3, and then go back to Unreal Tournament 2004 for old time's sake. That's a game I used to play a lot back in the day, and I was really good at it. But now I've lost most of my skill with the mouse and keyboard. And then I want to do Red Dead Redemption for a third time before Grand Theft Auto 5 comes out. And then I want to do uh, New Game Plus 2 in Demon Souls after beating it twice. And I want to get the Blue, blue Blooded Sword, which is probably the best sword in the game, for the third playthrough. And then I want to try The Witcher 2 again before The Witcher 3 comes out. And I want to do L.I. Noir on the PlayStation after beating it on the Xbox. And then I want to do Tomb Raider and Zone of the Enders HD, which are two games I've not beaten. At least for the HD. I did beat the original Zone of the Enders back in the PS2 days, but not two. I did, I've not beaten Zone of the Enders 2. And then I want to try Rage Again on, on PS3 after beating it on Xbox. And then I have a bunch of DLC to go through. I'm going to do Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. And I, I want to uh, beat Borderlands 2 DLC 4 when it comes out, as well as the two remaining Black Ops 2 DLCs that I've already paid for. And so that, in a nutshell, is what my, what my gaming goals are. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and helped you find out what your potential goals could be for gaming. And I'll see you guys later.